All right, what's up, everybody? Um, this is just another session of production notes for, for a new single that came out. Um, so the song is called uh, Big Old Blue. And I always almost call it Bring on the Night, which was like its first title. And then there was like a working title. And then I ended up calling the song Big Old Blue. But um, this is kind of how it, it came to be. This is a song that's uh, pretty emotional and, and uh, like kind of means a lot to me um it took a long time and a lot of takes to get this recording uh, to where i actually like the song this is a song as you can see has like a lot of tracks in it um and they're all they're all being used at this point i kind of have gone through and retracked things and erased things and redone things i think everything in this song except maybe the drums was done in like 10 plus takes and complete revisions and, and a lot of it has changed like the style of it changed you can see here this big clump of purple this is um all miles all the drums so that was kind of the first where where the recording started after that I sent it to lyman lyman did the bass additive stuff So there was the the groundwork and at that time I basically got rid of everything I had already laid down which is all scratch um, guitars and vocals and stuff and set out recording the guitars which I recorded a lot of times and a lot of using a lot of different guitars and a lot of different approaches and I probably retracked the guitars on this song nine or ten times full sessions it, it was a long long drawn out process but um, I did finally end up with sounds that I like. For the choruses, it's a whole different set of um, guitars and tracks. So then we had a uh, guitar, bass, drums. And once that stuff was in place, a, a lot of additive stuff went in. So one of the first additive things that I really wanted to have, and it, it, it actually started off that I was trying to get more of a uh, very mellow, light kind of 60s rock and roll feel or sound, um, you know, like very sweet, melodic 60s, not edgy rock 60s, but like lots of harmonies and stuff. Um, and the first thing that I added was uh, a tambourine part. Everything else has such a bigger sound that it's a little more faint in the mix, but I still kept it in there because I liked it. One of the next other layers was um, the keys. And that's my buddy Dave Sprinkle playing keys. kind of gets wrapped up in the guitar too I, I really like the way that they do that you can hear his flourishes kind of at the ends right before coming into the chorus so then it started getting a little thicker during this whole process, I was retracking things and resending things through different buses and just losing my mind, basically. Uh, and then Cam came after everybody else had laid their parts down.
one of the things that I, <laughs> one of the things that I really loved about working with this particular part, this is definitely Cam's tones, like big, thick guitar tones. But I was really looking forward to hearing the slide. That was a very particular thing that I wanted to hear. And so what's going on here with the slide is these two tracks are mostly happening on the left. They're all pretty much all happening on the left, far left. And then the send is actually happening on the right side. So when you hear the guitars without the, the effects send, the slide is all on the left. And then if you add the send, Then the effect send is where all that thickness of the delay, the, the space is coming from, but it's all on the right or mostly on the right. So you're getting this sort of sound that wraps around your head. Like if you uh, have headphones on, it's a really, really cool effect. So Cam was doing slides and then he was also doing some just straight up rocking guitar solo stuff. <laughs> So those are uh, most of the musical layers, I guess, pretty much all the musical layers. Um, this song has an intro and it'll have an intro on the album, but it does not have the intro on like streaming platforms like Spotify and stuff like that. So the intro is that was kind of like a radio mix and the intro will possibly be the way that that the new album starts i haven't really decided that yet the intro was made up of an acoustic guitar and then um some more keys that dave is playing so i put a bunch of fuzz on that so you just hear uh, mostly it's the send the bus with an effect on it That's the intro that'll probably show up on the album. It's not on the streaming platform. But once all of that was was set, then it was time for vocals. And I track these vocals probably 25 times and would just eliminate the entire session. I just never liked it. And then finally got to a place where I liked the, the takes and how they went together. There's several layers here. And one layer is being recorded with a, um, an AKG 214, which is a very nice, like, pretty crisp studio condenser mic and then the other one was a turner like classic turner mic the harp mic from like the 40s and that's the one that i'm singing into in the video for this song it actually did i did use that to record one of the vocal takes on this album it's a super cool sound it's it's really a niche sound it's it's not for everything but when you when you find it to sound good on something it sounds really good on that thing usually higher end stuff vocals and harmonica and horns and stuff like that where it's real kind of embraces the the high mid-range the lead vocal part was kind of broken up into sections cast your jealous stones in the waves cross your heart and hope to die in the big old blue you hear in the underneath all these tracks that I'm playing, you hear like the um, bass send and one of the guitar sends. That's because I had the I have them routed to some specific sends, and they're all kind of routed to the same place so that they have a similar um, uh, proximity effect or like a similar space around them. So that's why those are showing up. They're not actually in the track. And then uh, I, I went back and forth about having backing vocals on it, and it wasn't working. And then finally, I found this little thing that I kind of like. Cross your heart and hope to die. I liked that. And these ahs are sort of subliminal. <laughs> you can't really hear them, but it's just happening in the background. It's just kind of a cool air. Then the big vocal part was in the chorus. And this one I spent a lot of time on. Finally did really like the way that it came out. It took a long time, a lot of takes and a lot of um, attempts at harmonizing. But then I ended up with something I really liked. And you fall at the altar in solemn repose. Then you've got both hands folded, you've got your eyes closed, 
and you shout at the indigo of the indifferent sky and all of the gold light fading over the hillside all right so that was uh the last of the layers was was the vocals the lead vocals getting placed in there so yeah this one took a long time and a lot of takes and it was really fun to make the song but it it started getting tedious at the end one of the curses of being a songwriter and i'm sure a lot of songwriters have this issue is that when you're working on a song you get it stuck in your head and then you can't get it out because you're still trying to make it perfect so you're always thinking about it while you're doing it and then by the time you actually record the song and it's all done and taken care of you're like man i, I don't ever want to hear that song again so that's kind of you have to like wait before you start playing it again for people but anyway uh the last little part here that i'll play for you which is kind of fun is um cam's second guitar solo the second half of the song and he went nuts on a couple parts here in like all over the place um, but I really like the this this particular section of his solo. Yeah, so there it is. That's how big old blue came to be cast your jealous stones in the waves cross your heart and hope to die in the big old blue they're never gonna cry for you you are such a fragile fighter underneath layers of the heart and thicker skin you're never gonna 